Hey everybody, it's Anthony here with a review of the Redivis RT8 DMR radio. It's a pretty nice entry-level DMR handheld with some neat features, and this model has GPS built in, so you can forward GPS data from Brandmeister over to APRS. I'll start with a general overview of the radio, and then I'll go into a programming guide. So if you want to skip ahead, follow the timestamps in the description. Radio comes with some nice accessories. We've got a 2200 milliamp hour battery, a desktop charger, two antennas, a rubber duck, and a whip, programming cable, and an earpiece. And a quick note on the programming cable, it's pretty much just a straight USB cable with no serial chipset built in. So don't use a regular programming cable that you might use with the other radios. And of course, uh, the radio uses a Kenwood style connector, so there's many, many third-party accessories available. The RT8 has a solid plastic case with a nice finish. The radio is rated for IP67, dust and water resistance, and has gaskets around the accessory port, battery, and battery contacts to keep water out. The speaker is pretty big, it gets loud, and it sounds very good. Microphone audio is good too, nice clear audio with good frequency response. It's not muffled like other radios that you might get from overseas. So that's a nice, um, nice thing to see, and I'll put in some demo clips for you to have a listen. Okay, this is a test of the analog audio on the Redivis RT8. Frequency response is about 4 kilohertz at the top end. And you should be limited by the repeaters at about 300 hertz because they get rid of the PL tone. Pretty nice frequency response, a nice clean audio on this microphone. And this is a demo of the DMR audio. Frequency response is about 200 hertz all the way up to 3.85 kilohertz. Tested with a frequency sweep. Pretty nice audio, nice and clear and no background noise. All right, let's talk antennas. Rubber Duck resonates a bit low, around 420 megahertz at 1.3 SWR, and it has a 2.2 SWR at the calling frequency. That's 446. And the whip resonates around 435 at 1.3 SWR, and 1.9 SWR at the calling frequency. Eh, pretty decent for model band antennas, but I've seen better from my pile of portable antennas that is seemingly always growing. I would suggest using the whip since it's more efficient and maybe keep the rubber duck for hotspot use. All right, let's take a look at the menus here. First, we have contacts. You can do a manual dial or view a list of contacts that you have programmed in. On the contact, you can see the number or do a call alert. You could even edit the uh, contact number. Next, we have scan. You can turn on scan or view the list of channels. Next, we have zone. Here you can select different repeaters or different zones you have set up. I have a few set up for my hotspot here because I have a bunch of different talk groups programmed in and they don't fit since the zone only holds 16 channels. Under messages, you can send messages to other users, check your inbox, and you write messages with the keypad there, just like an old style cell phone. Or you can set up quick text in the CPS, tell your buddies to meet you on the local talk group. Under Utilities, you can access the radio settings. You can turn off the uh, keypad tone, the annoying beep. Change your power from high to low. Change your backlight timer. Set your squelch uh, threshold. You can change your picture or set it to a uh, text for the intro screen. And you can set the uh, GPS system you want to use. And it displays a small globe icon on the status bar. And if you don't have a GPS lock, it puts a red cross uh, right across that. So whatever you program in your CPS, you can set that for any channel you like. It'll beacon out to the uh, Rheinmeister APRS gateway. Under radio info, you can view your uh, DMR ID and check your firmware version. We'll go back here and enter program radio. Here you can do a bit of front panel programming. You can set your TX and RX frequency. You can change your channel name. Set your timeout timer. Put your uh, PL tone for uh, analog. You can change color code or repeater slot and TX contact for digital and your RX group. So pretty nice that you can do some front panel programming on this radio. If you install the custom firmware, there's a new option for MD380 tools. You can change the date status to a last heard view and enable the call sign database there from the uh, user DB. And there's another setting in there to add some extra info on the main display. You'll see when we go back, it adds some extra lines there for what talk group we're on, time slot, mic gain, and a bunch of different information. 
And back in the uh, radio settings, you can change the uh, mic bar graph. So when you hit the PTT, it gives you a little uh, graph there, and you can also change your mic gain. And you see when I key up here, a small bar graph appears on the side, and when I speak, you should see some deviation on the meter there. Pretty nice feature, make sure you're not overdriving the audio. Under DMR setup, you can set the talk group uh, right on the radio, so you don't even need to have it uh, programmed in the CPS. Net monitor shows some extra details, and you have promiscuous mode, which allows you to receive any talk group on the uh, time slot you want. And if you have that enabled, it shows a small eye in the status bar. It's kind of like a digital monitor feature, and it means you don't have to program RX groups. And another cool thing in the keyboard mode, you can enable a auto scroll, so you can just hold the button down and it scrolls for you. A nice feature to uh, prevent you from clicking that button a million times. And you can change the uh, key up tone to a different tone. It's a bit of a lower tone. And that's pretty much it for the custom firmware. It's really handy to just have that, uh, that last heard list and the user DB, but especially the promiscuous mode, because you can just receive any talk group you want. You don't have to program a receive group. It cuts a lot of time from the programming. So really no reason you shouldn't be installing the custom firmware. It's so easy to install. And we'll go into that later on in the video. So you might be wondering, well, you know, it's fine and dandy that you can get on uh, digital voice and this and that, but what's the benefit over analog? Well, one of the nice things with digital voice and DMR, or D-Star, Fusion, whatever, is generally they're pretty crystal clear right up until you get to the uh, fringe. So I did a quick test outside between analog and DMR, and I set up another radio inside. I plugged it into my uh, computer so I could record it. And I got up to about the fringe area where it got pretty noisy on analog and switched to digital, and it was pretty crystal clear. So I'll put in the demo here and you can have a listen for yourself. This is the 2 h testing on analog, right here at the fringe. Test one, two, test one, two, three. Signal fading a bit in and out. It's pretty noisy here. This is the 2 hew testing on analog. This is a test on DMR. This is the 2 hew testing. Absolutely crystal clear. Pretty nice. And here we are back on analog. In a bit of a fringe area here. I'm remoted in so I can hear myself. I'm just walking around. The noise getting in and out. And here we are in DMR. Pretty crystal clear, if you ask me. Sure beats having uh, that hiss in the background uh, when you're right on the fringe. Yeah, pretty cool, eh? Anyways, so I'm going to jump into the uh, screen recording here and we'll show you how to program this thing. Okay, first things first. If you're new to DMR, you need to sign up for a DMR ID. You can go to radioid.net or there's ham hyphen digital.org. That website's for Europe and Africa. They changed a few things after the whole GDPR fiasco. So anyways, for North America and the rest of the world, uh, hop on radioid.net, go here on register, follow the instructions, you'll be given a DMR ID. And next we'll go on the uh, website here for the downloads. I'll put the link in the description as well. Or you can go on uh, redivis.com and it's under support and resources. And on here we scroll down and there's an option for RT8 or RT8 GPS. I have the GPS model, so pick we pick whichever one you have and they have some other ones for their different radios here as well. And once you have that installed, it'll give you the, uh, the nice CPS here. It's very easy to use, not too complicated. It's a little different than uh, programming a standard analog radio, but follow along and it, you'll see it's not too complicated. So there's a few resources online for different websites that you can uh, find repeaters. There's DMR Mark. There's this one that's pretty nice, CQ DMR Map, and it has uh, all kinds of different networks. So we have uh, we have Brandmeister in there, and DMR Plus, and DMR Mark, and some other networks. So just zoom in here on uh, my local area and you can see there's a whole bunch of repeaters in uh, Montreal. So we click one here, we have this uh, V2RCM repeater there on Mount Royal. 
one's also there on DMR Mark because it's on the Mark network. There it is. So it shows the call sign and the frequency, the offset, the color code, and all the talk groups available. And I find that um, generally uh, it's more up to date if you go on uh, your local website. So for Canada, we have uh, this Can Turbo website. But uh, go ahead and uh, search uh, locally for what uh, repeater organization you have in your area. There should be one for uh, all the states and different provinces and stuff like that. But in Canada, we have this one, Can Turbo. So you can see here it has much more uh, information and different talk groups available than what's listed on uh, DMR Mark and what's listed on that CQ DMR map. So I suggest checking out your local website first. And if you're uh, going on Brandmeister, well, you don't need any of these lists. Just find the repeater and then you can use the uh, list of talk groups to pick and choose whatever you want. But we'll stick to this DMR Mark uh, network here. We'll open up our CPS so we can start programming. So uh, here in the uh, CPS, we've got to take care of a few things. In uh, general settings, we can enter our call sign, our radio ID from uh, radioid.net that we signed up for. We have the programming password. I set it to all nines. That basically disables it. Our uh, TX preamble duration, we set that to 960. And you can set the uh, intro screen from either uh, the built-in picture or uh, custom text. And we can set up the uh, custom buttons. I have mine set for uh, turning scan on and off, high low power, monitor for analog, a zone toggle. You could set these to whatever you like. So let's go ahead and uh, start adding in some contacts here or talk groups. You can see I've already added in some from the list here on this website. So I have, let's say, uh, worldwide on talk group one, that's a group call, uh, North America on talk group three, Canada on talk group 302. These are all group calls. You'll notice that the private calls are mostly used for uh, repeater commands, such as status or disconnecting from a reflector or linking a reflector, or even for the uh, APRS features on Brandmeister. Let's go ahead and click add here. We'll add a talk group from the list. So down here, let's say I want to add in this uh, Adirondacks talk group. I'll give it a short name. Let's say ADK for Adirondack. I'll set the talk group number to 31363. And uh, this one's on... Uh, time slot number one. So we'll keep that in mind for when we create the, the uh, channel. Next, we'll create a digital RX group list. So if you don't have the custom firmware, you need to do this. I recommend you uh, install the custom firmware to get rid of this step. It makes programming a lot easier because you can receive any talk group you want uh, with the custom firmware. Versus here, you gotta enter them all in for uh, each uh, time slot. So let's say I'll create a uh, Turbo TS1 for our CAN Turbo Repeater. And I'll add in some of the talk groups that I want to hear. So let's say Worldwide One, North America, Worldwide English, Canada, the tech talk groups. And uh, here's that other one I just created, that uh, Adirondack talk group. And you can just look at uh, what's available by the time slot that it's on and make sure that uh, you keep that in mind. It will only receive on that time slot on those groups that you have uh, listed here. And it'll only receive uh, 16 talk groups uh, per uh, receive group. All right, I'll create another one here for uh, time slot two. So let's say TRBO Turbo TS2. I'll add in my uh, local talk groups. So let's say local nine, local two. We have some regional talk groups for uh, all the provinces. So we'll put those in there. And now we can start creating channels. So we'll right click here, click add. We have a new channel here. Go ahead and give it a name. Type V2RCM, that's the call sign. WW for worldwide. Make sure the channel set to digital. We'll put a timeout timer in here so we don't talk our heads off. And we'll set the frequency. Again, this one's on uh, 447625. And it's a minus offset, so minus five megahertz, so 442. 625. We'll set the admit criteria to color code. That makes sure that you can only transmit if that uh, time slot is available, so you're not stepping on anybody. We'll set the contact name to uh, worldwide. That's what I set the channel for. And the group list, I'll set it to time slot one for our CAN Turbo network. Color code will be set to one as it's uh, listed here on the uh, repeater info. And the repeater slot one. So to create another channel, I can just copy it here. 
we'll make a new channel, click add, right click, paste, and all the uh, frequencies are added in there and uh, some basic uh, setup. We'll change the, we'll make this one for North America. So I'll set NA and I'll set my contact name to North America. And let's say we want to make one for local. So I'll copy and paste a new channel there. Let's say V2RCM L9 for local nine. Set the contact to local TG9. And this one's on time slot two. So to be able to receive it, we've got to put on the TS2 receive group. If you don't set a receive group, it'll automatically uh, set that to only the contact. So if you only want to hear one talk group on the repeater, you don't need to set a group list, but I recommend having a group list or using the custom firmware with the promiscuous mode so you can hear anything that's going on in that time slot. And this one's again, it's on time slot two, so I'll set it to TS2. And I can make another one here for local two. Local two is usually used as a, uh, a, a cluster. So it can have multiple repeaters hooked up there. It's basically a regional talk group. We'll set this one to V2 RCM L2. And I'll set it here, local, local TG2. And there we go. So to get these on the radio now, go on zone information, we'll click add. We'll add a new zone, Let's say V2 RCM. If you have a lot of talk groups and channels, you might want to add a one or a two so you can have multiple zones. A zone only holds 16 channels, so I generally find that's necessary. We'll add in the channels we just added to the uh, zone. And you can add as many channels uh, that fit here. Again, only 16, and you can put in analog channels as well. And if we want to do a scan, go in here, we add a scan list. Let's say we set this to uh, Montreal and I can add in the uh, channels I want to scan. I can even add some analog ones in here. Let's say I want to scan uh, 446 simplex. So we'll add those in. And then if you want to actually uh, use them for a scan list, you go back to the channels and you can see I can set the scan list here to Montreal. I can set those for all of them. So now whenever I press the scan button, again, I had set that before in the button definitions. So when I press that scan button, it will scan through all the uh, channels I have listed here in this Montreal scan list. And that's how you program a digital repeater. An analog uh, is pretty similar. Just go in here. I have a channel that I already created for uh, simplex. The only difference, we set the uh, channel mode to analog, bandwidth to 25K. I have a different scan list for simplex. You can see here, it just scans through some of the simplex channels I created. And there's also simplex DMR channels. Look for your uh, local area to see the uh, coordination there on the band. I have the uh, admit criteria set to always. And then again, you just set your frequency. If it's a repeater, just set the, uh, the input frequency here on TX and set your channel name. And if it's in analog mode, it opens up this uh, analog data section. Here you can add your uh, CTCSS or PL tone uh, decode and encode. So if it's a uh, repeater that has a PL, you go under encode and set it to whatever you want. And you just add it to a zone, same way you would uh, for a digital channel. Here, I'll add this to my uh, zone that I created before, and it'll show up on the radio. All right, so let's say we want to add in a uh, talk group for a Brandmeister repeater. You know, it's not listed the same way like it would be for a DMR Mark repeater or DMR Plus, where they have fixed uh, talk groups. Uh, Brandmeister is a very open network. You can do whatever you want on there. So they have a list of uh, talk groups there under data visualizations, or you can go on the PyStar website and they have a list of uh, all the available talk groups there on Brandmeister. So let's say we want to connect to Italy and get our fix of uh, spaghetti and meatballs. Let's see, where is it? All right, so here we go. Talk group 222. Two, two. Italia, there we go. Go on there. Talk group 222. Or if we want to get to the United Kingdom, talk group 235. So we'll add that in. 235. And I have a hotspot here for DMR, so I, I have all the frequencies uh, there for that. So it's, it's my own call sign, V2HEW. And let's go uh, Italy. And I'll set the contact there for uh, 
the new contact we made, Italy. The group list is automatic for Italy there. I don't have a group list set up for uh, Brandmeister. Here, I'll make, a, I'll make a new group list for Brandmeister. So BM, I didn't, uh, here I'll add in the both that I added there. So UK and Italy. I'll set the group list uh, received to BM. Contact to Italy. It's on time slot two. And it's always on time slot two for a simplex hotspot. I'll set the frequency. I'm on 433.25. And it's simplex. So 433.25 on the input. Set my uh, timeout timer a bit higher. And that's it. We can make another one for the UK. We'll go copy and paste. Set it to uh, UK. There we go. Set that to UK. So it's on group list for Brandmeister. It's got the Brandmeister talk groups in there. Time slot two. And I'd suggest maybe setting the power to low if you're on a hotspot because there's no need to waste battery. And that's pretty much it. Add them to a zone. We we'll go hotspot. Add those channels in. And that's it. Flash it to the radio. Click the button up here for right. Turn the radio on and it'll flash. And you're done. It's so easy. So one of the neat features with the uh, RT8 is there's a GPS model. And a few years ago, it wasn't really useful to have GPS on DMR. But now with Brandmeister, you can forward your GPS data over to APRS.fi, which is fantastic. And uh, it's only a few bucks more. Even at regular price, it's only, uh, it's only $10 more. So I suggest you just get the GPS model. It's a really nice feature to have. And you go on uh, Brandmeister here. And there's some special talk groups that you need to program in. So, so for the USA, it's 310999. And for Canada, it's 302999. You got to check which one is available for your uh, master server because they're different for every master. So let's jump into the uh, CPS here and we'll add in uh, the APRS uh, destinations. So I already have one in here for APRS Canada. It's a private call. 302-999. We'll add a new one in here for USA. APRS USA. Private call. 310-999. And we'll go in here to a GPS system. So you got to be on a repeater that has um, uh, the right master server for the right uh, destination. So for a Canadian repeater, you would use uh, the APRS Canada. And I can make another one here. I'll set it to a current channel, my report interval, so that'll say how often it beacons. I'll say every three minutes. And I'll set it to uh, APRS USA. This one would be used for uh, repeaters that have a USA master server. And if we go on their channel information, we'll see I created uh, a channel here for my uh, hotspot. So we have here, I just named it APRS beacon. And the only thing you really need to do is just set the GPS system. That's that's it. You don't even need this to be enabled to send GPS info and receive GPS info. These are not necessary. Um, so just set it to um, to whatever master server you want. Again, let's double check what I did here. So I have GPS one set for APRS Canada, GPS two set for APRS USA. My hotspot is on the USA master server because uh, it works better for me. So I'll set it to uh, system two. That's pretty much it. Again, you don't need this to send GPS info, receive GPS info. That doesn't actually have anything to do with the APRS system. Uh, what's, what that's there for is for sending GPS and receiving GPS to other radios um, that are nearby. So we don't use this feature. It's not, it's not useful for anything in uh, the amateur space. So I recommend leaving it off. If you leave it on, what happens is when you unkey, it will blast out uh, GPS info on the talk group. So completely unnecessary traffic. And uh, it could cause uh, congestion with the network when you unkey and then it rekeys. And if somebody else tries to talk, it could interfere. So I'd recommend just leaving it off, you know, out of sight, out of mind, not necessary. And you can put that on any talk group uh, channel you want. So I have one here for uh, the Reddit talk group, you know, great group of guys on there. You can set it to a GPS system and it'll just beacon out and it'll just beacon to that uh, APRS destination and won't cause any traffic on the talk group you're on. So you can just sit there and uh, monitor and or drive around or whatever, and it'll just beacon at the interval that you set. And you can also set this on the radio. If you go in the menu, utilities, 
radio settings, GPS, and select system. You can select a GPS system to use on any channel you like. Just remember, this only works on Brandmeister and it's not available for use on any other network, so no DMR Mark or DMR Plus, only on Brandmeister. Now, to actually get this working with Brandmeister, you need to log in. And we'll go under self care in the menu. And on this page, we'll set the radio brand to Chinese radio. We'll set the APRS interval to 60 seconds. This doesn't matter because it only follows uh, the beacon interval that you set in the radio. So I suggest just leaving this at the whatever setting you like. You can set your APRS icon that displays on the map. You can set your call sign, I have it set to five. You, you can look up uh, APRS SSIDs. Um, I believe five is for, um, you know, other networks for D star or internet or whatever. So I have it set for five because it's going through a digital voice mode and you can set your APRS text. I have mine, uh, Anthony in Montreal, and this is also used for, um, talker alias for radios that support talker alias. And that's it. You just click save and, um, uh, go outside. Once it gets GPS lock and you're on a channel that has a GPS system enabled, it'll start uh, beaconing out to the, um, the, uh, GPS gateway on Brandmeister and you know, you're on APRS.fi. It's really that simple. And if you want to check if it's working, just navigate to APRS.fi, get to your local area, and uh, you can either punch in your call sign here or uh, see if you appear on the map. And there you go. Away you go. It'll start uh, the beaconing just like uh, this boat here. And you can see where you've been and all kinds of stuff. Really useful. And there's all kinds of stuff you can do on APRS.fi. You can check the weather. There's some other stations on here like... Uh, show some repeaters that are available in the area and uh, yeah, really cool service. And it's nice to be able to beacon out to it. And of course, let's look at how to install the custom firmware. My preferred way of doing this is with the KD4Z virtual machine for VirtualBox. You can download that on GitHub. I'll have the link in the description and on the blog post. All you really have to do here is boot up the VM and we'll select the radio from the device menu and select the digital radio in there. Just make sure you don't have the CPS open while you have the virtual machine because it could cause some conflicts. And the first thing you need to do is get the latest version of the custom firmware. So type GLV to download and compile the latest firmware and contacts database. If you just need to update your contacts, you could also use the GLV users command. Depending how fast your computer is, this could take a while. I've sped it up here in the video. It's going to compile the firmware direct from source, and then you'll be able to flash it to the radio. So once the firmware is compiled, you can type flash if you have a non GPS radio or flash GPS. If you have a GPS radio, make sure the radio is in DFU mode. You just need to press the top and PTT button on the side and turn the radio on. If it's in DFU mode, the light on top should be blinking with the screen off. After that's complete, you'll reboot the radio and you can flash the database by typing flash DB. And that's it. The radio should reboot and you'll be up and running with the custom firmware. It's very simple and you can use the VM anytime you like to update the user database. All right, let's wrap up this review. So I'm pretty impressed with the RT8. It's a very well-built radio. The case is very rugged and it's waterproof, which is nice. The receiver is actually pretty good. It's a super heterodyne receiver, which is a much better than some of the dual band uh, DMR radios out on the market today. Very sensitive receiver. I used it a few times on uh, SO50 as a downlink radio, works fine. The audio quality is really nice. The speaker sounds great. Uh, as you heard, the microphones are pretty good on uh, analog and on DMR. It's not muffled at all. And with the GPS to APRS now that works on uh, Brandmeister, that's an awesome feature. And the DMR is pretty cool. You can access a whole bunch of talk groups worldwide and talk to your friends, uh, you know, wherever they may be. I have it hooked up with a hotspot here and it just works fantastic. So it's a pretty inexpensive radio and I would definitely recommend it. And I would also recommend installing the uh, custom firmware. That firmware really makes it useful for uh, amateur radio stuff because you can throw in the whole uh, contacts database and you have that uh, digital monitor uh, promiscuous mode thing. So, you know, all in all, I'm very happy with it and a very special thanks to uh, Redivis for uh, sending this out for review. And as always, thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And we'll see you in the next one.